All right, I am back with another episode in a series I call Pro Tip, where I partner with a professional in the industry to discuss a recipe or technique for the home bartender. And as always, a portion of the proceeds from this video will go to support out of work bartenders or folks in the industry. And you can do your part as well by supporting local this week. Now this one's a bit of a tribute to all of my Wisconsinites in the audience, a very vocal group who uh, skewered me a little bit for not including the Wisconsin brandy old fashioned in my ode to the old fashioned video a while back. So I decided to go right to the source and talk to a bona fide Wisconsin bartender, bar owner, author, and all around great guy, Brian Bartles. So Brian, if I'm looking for a tasty beverage to kick off my Friday night fish fry, what do you got for me, sir? Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Brian Bartles, uh, author of The United States of Cocktails and co-owner of Settle Down Tavern in Madison, Wisconsin, right over my shoulder here, uh, talking to you a little bit about Wisconsin brandy old fashions. Uh, personally speaking, uh, I love a classic brandy old fashioned uh, made Wisconsin style. I'm never going to be disappointed by that. And by Wisconsin style, I mean uh, it's got to have brandy. Um, and they will automatically ask if you like it sweet, sour, or press. Um, that being sweet, 7 up, sour, citrus, or uh, typically squirt sometimes, soda, uh, or press, which is half club soda, half 7 up to cut that sweetness. Um, I think personally, um, I love switching up the sugar component if possible. Um, I, I like a richer, bolder sugar. Um, we use maple syrup at the settle down for our old fashions. Um, it definitely elevates the complexity of it, um, but you really can't substitute maraschino cherries. So you, you, should, you should definitely pick up some of those. Uh, they're behind every bar in Wisconsin. Uh, oranges you can't substitute, obviously and uh, Angostura bitters, which are dynamite. The best bitters in the world. Three dashes will make me a happy little camper. Um, and then last but not least, I like to switch out sometimes rye whiskey for the brandy. It just k k gives it a nice little spice kick, um, which we should be able to do once in a while, kick it once in a while, you know? Um, that's my version of a classic Wisconsin brandy old fashioned. I like to mix it up. Already I'm liking this drink because it's not super fussy, right? It's sort of as you like it. Depending on your palate, there's a few things you can swap out to really make it your own. But of course, there are some signature ingredients we're gonna try to stick to here, one of those being maraschino cherries. I'm just gonna go with the bright red ones here, though you could certainly swap these out for something fancier. To get our daily dose of vitamin C, we're gonna use an orange wheel as well. Now, traditionally, this is a slice of orange, not an orange peel. And of course, we need our Angostura bitters. Now, you'd normally take all these things, put it with a sugar cube, and start to muddle it up, but Brian talks about swapping out the sugar cube for maple syrup. To me, this sounds like a great little tweak to the recipe, and it'll really help the sugar incorporate into the drink. But again, to each their own. So today I'm gonna make the three standard variations of the Wisconsin Brandy Old Fashioned and see which one I like best. That's sweet, sour, or press. But regardless of which one you're making, you're gonna start by dropping an orange slice into a rocks glass and then add a maraschino cherry in as well. Why don't we make it two? Hit that with three generous dashes of your Ango Bitters. And then for the sweetness, again, we're going to swap out the sugar cube for a fourth ounce or about seven mils of maple syrup. And this is right about the point where fans of the traditional old fashioned start to cringe a little bit, but we gotta trust the process here. We're gonna start to muddle all of these things together and it should end up looking like a big juicy mess. I mean, you're really trying to pulverize the cherries, extract all the juices from the orange. It's not looking too pretty, but with the Angostura Bitters, I can tell you it's starting to smell amazing. We're doing this times three, and then next up we're gonna add our ice and spirit. And of course today we're making the classic Wisconsin brandy old fashioned, although as Brian mentioned, you could swap this out for whiskey. So from left to right, we're gonna make the sweet, sour, and press versions of the Wisconsin brandy old fashioned. And when we talk about brandy, we're almost always referring to Corbell. So how did this old fashioned become a brandy cocktail? Well, the story goes that the German immigrants back then took a liking to that California made Corbel brandy, which they tried at the 1893 World Columbian Exposition in Chicago. And today, Wisconsinites reportedly buy half of Corbel's entire production. That's a lot of old fashions. So we're gonna start by adding some ice to each of these glasses. And to each of these, we're gonna add about two ounces or 60 mils of brandy. But again, you could probably just eyeball this. Next up is our topper, which as Brian mentioned, separates these three different primary styles. The first being sweet on the left, which will just be a splash of 7-Up. Next we have our sour, which is usually either a sour mix like this or some squirt. 
And then last up we have our press version, which tries to cut the calories a little bit by doing half club soda, half 7-Up. Typical garnish might be another cherry and an orange wedge, or you could even ask for something savory like a pickled olive, onion, or a cheese curd. All right, let's give our first one a taste, our sweet version of the Wisconsin Brandy Old Fashioned. I mean, this is a tasty drink. It's on the sweeter side for sure. We've added 7-Up, so it goes down definitely a lot easier. But it's clear that Wisconsin has created its own thing here that is distinct from the original Old Fashioned. So let's try our next variant. This is the Sour Wisconsin Brandy Old Fashioned that has a bit of sour mix. All right, this one goes down really easily as well. I think it's probably even more of a distinct cocktail because it feels more like a sour versus a spirit forward. But the citrus is a nice counterbalance to the cherry, maple, and orange sweetness. I dig it. Now on to our third and final Brandy Old Fashioned. This is the press version, half club soda, half 7-Up. I think this is the one for me. I feel like if I'm at a supper club putting away two or three of these, I don't want something too sweet, so I like that it's cut it down a little bit. What I've learned here is there's no perfect recipe for this drink. The perfect Wisconsin Brandy Old Fashioned is the one you're feeling at that moment, and I love that attitude. Brian, any parting words for the audience? Hey guys, just wanted to say uh, thank you to Nick and Cocktail Chemistry for having me on. Uh, it's an amazing program and I cannot recommend enough other episodes if you haven't checked it out with very talented professionals dropping science and sorcery. Uh, lastly, please support your local bars, restaurants, um, small businesses, whatever you can do. Uh, take out delivery, uh, if they're doing limited dine-in, your support means everything right now and we are truly grateful. Um, it means the world, and all the love. Thanks, Brian, and also thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. Bespoke is a monthly membership club that delivers awesome boxes from top shelf goods from under the radar brands, and I am pretty psyched about the one I just got, and you'll see why in a second. But every month, Bespoke Post introduces their members to really cool products, whether it's outdoor gear, barware, home and kitchen goods, clothing, and more, just based on preference quiz that you fill out. This box is called Aged, and it's all about aging cocktails or whiskey with this cool bottle and white oak that they provide. It also comes with a pair of these cocktail tumblers made from Italian crystal that are just really fun to use. So I'm gonna age some Boulevardier cocktails using this kit. I'm gonna make about four cocktails worth, starting with four ounces or about 120 mils of sweet vermouth, the same amount of whiskey and Campari, and then I'm just gonna drop one of these white oak staves right into the bottle. Let that sit for about a month to impart some of that oak flavors and poured it into our tumbler glass. And let's give it a taste. Amazing. They switch these boxes up every month and they're at least $70 in retail value but only cost $45 to you. If you don't like what they assign you, you can swap it out anytime. And right now, new subscribers can get 20% off your first box by using my code 20chem. And again, thank you to Bespoke Post for sponsoring this video. And as I mentioned at the beginning, a portion of the proceeds from this video will go to support out of work and struggling bartenders and folks in the industry, but you can do your part as well by supporting local. You can order to-go cocktails and food or safely support them in a way that makes sense for you. And if you want to support this channel, the best thing you can do is just watch more videos. If you like these pro tips, I'll put a few more on screen here that are pretty fun.